Spot Younger Sargon, Deputy Opinion Editor at Newsweek with us. Am I making too big of a deal out of this? You know, Leland, I was on the subway this morning at 7 a.m., and you know who else was on that platform? It was working-class people of color who had to suffer through this terrorist attack only to have people minimize it, only to have Democratic politicians call it crime. I mean, at least they're finally saying the word crime, right? It is absolutely unbelievable. The victims of crime in America are disproportionately black. They're disproportionately poor. They're disproportionately poor and working-class people of color, and they are ir- erased because people like President Biden want to only talk about white supremacists as the biggest domestic threat to America when people are being shot, when children are being shot in their beds, when Asian Americans, my neighbors, are being shot on the subways, pushed in front of subways every day. It is absolutely maddening, and I'm Hmm. so glad you're bringing it up. I don't think you're making too big a deal of this. What's stunning is sort of how the media plays uh, along uh, with this. For example, yesterday, we knew a couple of things. We knew that multiple people were shot. We knew that it was a well-planned attack. We knew that the guy had a gas mask. Uh, we also knew that he it was described as a heavy set black woman. Uh, and we knew that he had fireworks and it was a well-planned attack. That's what we knew. The police commissioner in New York at the time said that she was sure of what it was not. Take a listen. This is not being investigated as an act of terrorism at this time. Again, if the report had been a heavy set white guy with a MAGA hat, would she have said the same thing? Of course they would have called it domestic terrorism. And the New York Times would have called it domestic terrorism instead of leaving out the racial description of a shooter at large, okay? The shooter was at large. We were all supposed to be looking for this man and helping the the NYPD apprehend him. And the New York Times wouldn't even say what the description that the police released. They wouldn't even admit that this was an African-American man. Now, of course, we have struggled with this. We have struggled to cover crime in a way that is not racist. Of course, we have had a problem historically in the media with associating being Muslim or being black with crime. Yes, we have to do better. But at a time when a man who just shot 30 New Yorkers is on the loose and you won't tell us what he looks like because it's not politically correct. Uh-huh. Are you kidding me with well, this? It's different. It's different than than being about crime. That's why we wanted to have you on, because yesterday and today, so many of the cable news channels, and it's, it's Fox News as well, is all talking about the crime in New York City. Crime is out of control. This wasn't crime. Crime is out of control. But this is terrorism. Those are, those are different things. And then Eric Adams this morning on CN, CNN had an answer to everything. Take a listen. But we want to enhance our level of security, and that's why I'm talking about examining some of the technology out there, not the technology of detecting devices when you walk through the airports, but there are newer versions that are used at ballparks and other places that you can actually detect if someone is carrying a gun. Right. So you can't stop fair jumpers, okay? <laughs> no, and, and the security cameras don't work, but let's get new, new right. technology. And the CNN anchor is like, oh, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Totally. It's like, Hello, let's get rid of civil rights because we can't stop people from from jumping the fair. Exactly. You know what I mean? He's going so totally in the opposite extreme. And that's the problem here is like there's no middle ground between something like facial recognition technology that they're using in, you know, communist China on the one hand. And then the progressives on the other hand who refuse to treat mental health at all, who refuse to admit that there's a problem. I think I, I agree with you, Leland, that this was not crime. But I do think that there is an aspect here of mental illness. This man is clearly mentally oh, yeah. ill, clearly was not um, was not given the treatment that he needs. We do have a mental illness yeah. crisis. And again, that stems from the inability to treat these things as real problems. I- I'm wondering why the media that is supposed to hold, at the very least, police to account. And boy, did we see that during George Floyd. And thank God they did, because that's what the media's job is. The NYPD said it wasn't terrorism. It clearly was. Botched the investigation from the beginning. Uh, the security cameras aren't working. They couldn't even get their press conference to work, for God's sakes. Um, but then they just fall right in line and say, oh, yes, uh, it's crime. How is that doing a service to the people of New York? 
Yeah, and it's amazing because now you'll hear a lot of people praising the work of the NYPD, the same NYPD whose work progressives have been hampering for the yeah. last year and a half with all of this defund the police stuff and also the mentality. There's been a lot of red tape now, so police officers feel very hampered and not able to approach suspects, not able to really do their job. And again, I, I feel like it's like on the one end you have progressives who are sort of don't believe in policing at all, but then the answer from Mayor Adams seems to be, you know, this sort of going too far in the other direction, you know, to hell with civil rights. Right, you know, like, you know, we, we don't like stop and, this, we don't like stop and frisk, but we're going to search exactly. everybody who gets, who gets on the subway. Exactly. And, and then 30, when the guy's on the run for 30 hours, we'll wait for him to call from the McDonald's. He was the one who called Crime Stoppers. Like, it, you almost he can't make... Crime Stoppers, and when he was arrested, he said, I can't believe it took you so long. <laughs> it's just terrible. It, the only, in, in a really sad way, the only reason you can kind of laugh about it, one, because it's so sad and serious, but two, because, but by the grace of God, nobody died. You know, had, had he been Amen. better with a weapon, this would have ended very, very differently. Um, Bacha, we got to run, but thank you. We appreciate you coming on, and uh, we'll talk to you soon, all right? Thanks yeah. so much for having me, Leland. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.